Hi everyone, welcome back. And so this time we're going to be dealing with a problem that deals with Burger's vectors, which is the best name. So what is Burger's vector? Why do we care about it? Well, Burger's vector is, is something we can see when we have a defect. So let's say I have a whole bunch of atoms right here, and then I introduce a defect. Now, there can be a bunch of different possibilities here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I pushed really hard right here. And when I did that, I went from looking like this to something that looks kind of like the following. Okay, um, that's me pushing it over. This row got moved over and I have more atoms above it, obviously. I'm just needing to draw enough to be able to see this. Now what does Burger's vector do? Well, Burger's vector is simply saying that if I'm going a certain, you know, if I'm perfect, you know, a perfect pattern, I should be able to go up a certain number of steps, I'm gonna add some extra atoms up here, over a certain number of steps, and I should be able to reverse that more or less. So I went up three, I'm gonna go down three. And then I'm gonna go over to left two. And you can see that I kind of retraced my steps and I came back to the same point. So Burger's vector is what happens when we have a dislocation because that's no longer gonna be the case. Okay, that will no longer be the case. So I'm gonna go up three steps. Well, I'm gonna go this way this time because it kind of got messed up a little bit. I'm gonna go over two. I'm going to go down. I've gotta go diagonal again here. Let's make sure I do this nicely. And then I'm gonna go down three, and then over two. And what do you mean, what's going on here? You can see that I have an issue. So I went up three, I went down three, I went to the right two, I went to the left two, but there is a gap, there is a gap. One. And so my Burger's vector is simply saying, well, what step do I have to take from where I ended to get to where I began? And so that right there will be the burger's vector. There's various different ones of this, but that's the one we're looking at right now. Okay. Now the cool thing is, for a face center cubic or a base five center cubic cell, my burger's vector is always going to take the following form. So it's going to be burger's vector is equal to a over two. This is a vector times u v w where UVW is just simply the steps I'm taking for that particular um, direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the Burger's vector and find its length for, we'll just do it for one different type of um, atom. So let's try it for, we'll do it for aluminum. So we're gonna do it for aluminum. Okay. Yeah, we'll do this for aluminum. So first off, aluminum is a face-centered cubic structure. Other things I can look up online are that the radius of an aluminum atom is equal to 0.1431 nanometers. Wonderful. Now, for the face-centered cubic structure, what direction am I going to have my Burgers vector go along? Well, it's always going to be on the close packed direction. You got to find the direction on which it touches the most closely. So for that, that means we're, it's along one of the faces. So if it's on a face, you know, let's just draw my you know, cubic cell here. It's going to be this line right here. That is the path that dislocations are going to take because they want to take the closest packed direction, my closest packed plane. And while this is not the closest packed plane that I'm showing you right now, it is the closest packed direction. Okay, so what is this direction? Well, that direction goes one step this way and one step up. And it goes zero steps in the third direction. It doesn't go that way at all. So I can draw that as 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 negative one, one, zero, all of those guys are possibilities here um, because I could technically do any of these sides and call it good in any of the directions. I don't want to write them all, 
So we're just going to pick the 110 because that just makes the most sense when writing it. So then, for aluminum, for because it's facing our cubic, and that's the closest packed direction, our Burgers vector will look something like this. Okay, now that's got us a little away here. Now we need to figure out what A is, and A is the length of a side of our um, unit cell. So I'll just draw the front here. We know for a face inner cubic it touches along that diagonal right here. And so this is A, that's A, and it has a length of 4R right there. So if I draw this, like it is that this is 4R, this is A, that is A as well. And so 16R squared is equal to 2A squared. A is going to be equal to 2 square root of 2 times R. And we already know what R is, it's 0 0.1431 nanometers, so I can plug that in. It's equal to 2 square root of 2 times 0 0.1431 nanometers. Let's plug that in our calculator and see what it gets. Okay. I got that's equal to 0 0.4047. So my Burgers vector would then be equal to half of that, so 0.202. I'm going to go with this 202. Eh. We'll go exact. 110. Okay, great. Now, what is the length of this Burgers vector? Well, to get the magnitude of the vector, it's not all that hard. The magnitude of this Burgers vector is simply going to be equal to the 0 0.20235 times the square root of u squared plus v squared plus w squared. So that'll be equal to 0 0.20235 times the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. Or if I put that in my calculator and make it nice, it comes out to be 0 0.2862 nanometers. And there we go. So that is it. That helps us find the length of a Burgers vector and where the Burgers vector is for a aluminum unit cell. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.